Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Bottlenecking CPUs versus GPUs. This is one of the most common questions that I get asked. Will X GPU bottlenecks Y CPU or will X CPU bottlenecks Y GPU? Here we're gonna answer that question for you once and for all. And the answer is yes, no, always, sometimes, it depends, and what game are you playing? Because there is never a simple answer. I get asked this question every single day, either on Discord or beneath the comments of videos or when I'm live streaming on Twitch, and there is never a simple answer to that question because it simply depends upon what you're doing. The truth of the matter is, there's always a bottleneck somewhere in the system. It could be the game engine, it could be the CPU, it could be the graphics card, it could be the resolution or the detail setting you're running or what you're doing, it could be the game that you're playing. Something limits your ultimate performance. Now here I have two examples of games that demonstrate how sometimes the CPU is the bottleneck and sometimes the GPU or the graphics card is the bottleneck, it just depends. Fire. On the top half of the screen, we have World of Warships. On the bottom half of the screen, we have Ghost Recon Wildlands. 1440p, high detail, both games. We're using the presets and we are at 1440p. These were recorded externally on an Elgato 4K Pro 60 capture card. No performance loss for recording. MSI Afterburner is providing the real-time numbers on the screen and Fraps provides the benchmark results that I will actually use later in this video. But the benchmark results are not actually what's important. It's the real-time numbers you're looking at that actually matter. Look at the top line of both replays, the GTX 1060. On the bottom half of the screen, you have Ghost Recon Wildlands. We're between 98 and 99% on that first number. That is the graphics card utilization. That is how much of the compute power of the graphics card that we are using. Now look down to the Ryzen 7 1700 and notice it's about 31 to 38%, that's 34, 35. So we're using one third of our CPU. We are completely graphics card bound in Ghost Recon Wildland. The GTX 1060 is completely and totally the limit to more performance. Notice we're about 45, 47, 48 frames per second. A GTX 1070, a GTX 1080, or a 1080 Ti would make a world of difference to performance in Ghost Recon Wildlands at 1440p at high detail. More CPU power would make zero difference here. On the top half of the screen, we have World of Warships, a wonderful free-to-play game that is an absolute ton of fun. And notice that the GTX 1060 is at about 55 to 60% usage. It is absolutely, totally bottlenecked by the CPU. But wait a minute, you say, there's no way that could be the case. The Ryzen 7 1700 is 10 to 12% utilized. It clearly has nothing to do. You have to remember that that utilization is across all eight cores and 16 threads. The fact of the matter is the number that varies is the GTX 1060 utilization as explosions, gunfire, and things. Notice that the GTX 1060 is up to 72, 73% here. It was down at 55 before. That's what's varying because it isn't the limit to performance. Notice the frame rate is not moving because we are totally CPU bound. 115, 120 frames per second is as fast as a Ryzen CPU, be it a Ryzen 5, a Ryzen 7, it makes no difference. At 3.7 gigahertz, this is as good as it is. That being said, 120 frames per second is spectacular. So it's very easy to make the statement that a Ryzen 7 1700 at 3.7 gigahertz is a bottleneck, but it's at 120 frames per second. Is this a big deal? I don't think it is. Sometimes it will be. In fact, you can see there it dropped a bit and it dropped down below because there was explosions and stuff going on. But the fact is we're over 100 frames per second, so it's a, quote, bottleneck, but the performance is great. On the bottom half of the screen, we're below 60 frames per second, but that is not the fault of the Ryzen 7 1700. That's the fault of the GTX 1066 gigabyte card. Throw a 1080 Ti in there, and we'd be over 100 frames per second. So that's a graphics card limitation. So the purpose of this video is 
If you're asking the question, if I buy this graphics card, will it bottleneck that CPU? Yes, no, maybe. Sometimes it depends what game are you playing, what resolution and what detail setting. Without all that information, there is no answer to your question because sometimes it will and sometimes it won't depending upon what you're doing, at what resolution, at what detail setting. Now for just a few seconds, I wanna go full screen in both games just so you can get a piece of what it looks like rather than having the screen split and trying to figure out what's what. This is what Ghost Recon Wildlands looks like at 1440p at high detail. It is not 60 plus frames per second, but it's close and it's completely playable. A lot of people think that you have to have a really high-end graphics card to play games at 1440p. It helps, it definitely helps, but it's not required. This is actually completely playable, even if it doesn't average 60 frames per second. A 1070 or a 1070 Ti would be a quote, better choice and have more future proofing in front of it for the next round of games. But if you only have a 1060, it does in fact work. Switching back to World of Warships, you can see that we're when we're engaged at close range, there's a lot of shell impacts. Look at the frame rate. It drops off really fast. This ship's about to be destroyed. And then once it comes off the screen, watch the frame rate come back up. There's 90, 92, 94, 90, oh, now it drops back down. So what you're looking at in World of Warships tremendously impacts the performance. But it's above 60 frames per second, like 99% of the time, and there's one or two dips down. So it's completely, utterly playable. The truth of the matter is you could play at 4K at medium detail if you turned a couple of things down, but 1440p is kind of the sweet spot. But this game isn't as demanding as Ghost Recon Wildlands. But as you can see, it's very beautiful and an absolute blast to play. This video also gives me a chance to make a special announcement. I am now a member of the World of Warships Community Contributor Program. Now this doesn't mean the regular tech videos are going anywhere, not to worry, but it does mean that I will have early access to some test ships, I will have some giveaways to do on my Twitch live streams, and I will be making a little bit more World of Warships content than I was previously. But not to worry, the hardware stuff isn't going anywhere. This is a side program that lets me have access to some some extra stuff in, frankly, my favorite game today, World of Warships, which I stream a ton on Twitch. Link down to my Twitch channel in the description below. If you like live streams in Twitch, if you like my content, the sound of my voice, my sense of humor, or lack thereof, please go check it out. Click the follow button, click the notify button to be notified when I'm streaming. I'd love if you came by and said hello. Maybe you enjoy it and you want to stay and hang out with me. Here I'm including the chart simply so you can see the average 1% low and 0.1% low numbers from when I actually benchmarked these games. Please note these are not built-in benchmarks. This is live gameplay that I recorded. Full matches, well, a full match in World of Warships and then a bunch of running around in random combat in Ghost Recon Wildlands. You, of course, cannot compare these games to each other. That's not the point. It's just to give you the information since, after all, I collected it. Once again, Ghost Recon Wildlands was GPU bottlenecked. World of Warships was CPU bottlenecked on the exact same hardware. Hopefully you found this interesting, informative, or useful. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button directly below. Questions and comments in the comment section, please check the links in the video description. Links to the hardware that I've tested here will be down there in the video description below to both Amazon and Newegg. Those are affiliate links. They do support the channel. Use those while shopping and you'll get many more videos like this. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time.